Hello everyone. Today I wanted to talk about a new tool for blocking in levels that I spent most of April working on. Creating a level is one of the most important parts of creating a 3D game, and all levels begin with a blocking in process where you sketch in the most important chunks of land, ramps, and platforms that your character is going to be interacting with. Often, this is done with a third-party tool that is not focused on level design, and you have to go through the process of re-importing that each time you update. Wouldn't it be easier to just block in your scene directly in the Godot viewport? Well, I've come up with a tool that does just that. The Cyclops Level Builder lets you click and drag to add blocks to your scene, and then move them around, cut them apart, and change their shape. You can quickly create floors, walls, staircases, ramps, and all the other blocks you need to flesh out your scene. The blocks all have collision on them, so you can get to playtesting right away by dropping in your player character. And since this all runs inside the Godot editor, you can apply any Godot materials that you make directly to your blocks. You can use the blocks to start sketching out your level and replace them later with more finished assets, or you can even use them directly in your final scene. This project is available from its GitHub page. If you do find this tool helpful, please consider supporting me on Patreon or through my Ko-fi. Every bit of support helps me to continue to make software like this. To get started using Cyclops Level Builder, you're first going to need to download the files from the GitHub repository page. Uh, unzip that zip file and inside you will see a folder called add-ons. You're going to want to take that add-ons folder and copy it into the root of the game that you're working on. Uh, here you can see I've already started a game project. Uh, I have a little bit of stuff already and I've created a level called test level 2 that we are going to be creating the Cyclops block in. And you can see I've already downloaded the add-ons and added it to the root of my game project. And here you can see the Cyclops level builder that has all the files uh, from that we downloaded from the GitHub page. Let's close that up and let's go into our level. You can see we just have a 3D root. This is just an ordinary blank scene. And now we're going to make sure we go up to project, project settings, over here to plugins, and make sure that this is enabled. Uh, by default, that will be off, but just put the check mark over there and uh, the plugin will be activated. Now that we've activated the plugin, we are going to click on the plus button over here to add a new node to our scene. And if we type in Cyclops, you can see we have a few options. Make sure Cyclops blocks, the one that ends in the S, is the one that is selected here, and click Create. And that will be the root of our new Cyclops scene. Now, in order to create our first block, just make sure that this is selected so that the Cyclops toolbar is visible. Make sure the block tool is highlighted, and then just click and drag in your scene to place your first block. The block tool lets you create and add blocks. Uh, if you click and drag an empty space, it will create a new block about 20 meters away from where the viewer is. Uh, if you want to create a block that is adjacent to an existing block, just click and drag on the surface of that block, and it will create a face that is flush with the face that you are drawing on. Uh, once you've drug out the base, just uh, move the mouse up and click again to finish off the block. Uh, you can also change the size of the blocks by holding down the control key and clicking and dragging on a face. This will automatically move the side of that face along the edge that you're dragging. Now the block tool is also used for repositioning these blocks. Uh, if I click on a block without moving it, then the block will become selected. And then if a block is selected, if I then click and drag on it, then it is going to move. Uh, by default, it is going to move in the X, Z plane, but if you hold down the Alt key, then it is going to move along the Y axis. Uh, if you hold down the Shift key, you can add multiple blocks to your selection, and then when you click and drag, you will move those blocks all at once. Hold down the Alt key to move them up and down. And in this fashion, you can quickly start blocking in your scene. You can make 
floors, you can make walls, and all sorts of other basic things to uh, get your scene going. The Prism tool is a lot like the Block tool. Uh, to use it, make sure Prism is selected, and then click in Empty Space to add a point to the base of the shape that you want to create a prism of. Uh, if you make a mistake, if you want to delete the last point you added, just press the backspace key to go forward and draw your new points. When you're, fine, when you're finished drawing the base, press Enter to switch into drag mode, and then you can drag out the size of your shape. And uh, you can do this not only in empty space like I did just now, you can also do this on the surface of an existing shape. So if I wanted to add a triangular corner to this surface right here, I could click some points there, press enter, and there is a wedge shape for the corner. The clip tool allows us to cut objects into pieces. To start with, select the object you wish to cut while you're in block mode, and then come over here to the Clip tool. This will allow you to place vertices on the surface by clicking. You can see that we've defined a line there, and now if we press the Enter key, that will cause a cut along the line that we just placed and perpendicular to the surface. Uh, if you wish to uh, have a more angled cut, you can place three points instead. If we come over here, we can click on the edges here and down here to create a three-dimensional plane. And now if we press enter, the cut will be along those, along that plane we just defined. And if we go back into block mode, you'll see we can move these bits apart. Uh, this is re really useful for doing things like adding doorways. So for example, if we want to add a portal to this block here, I'm going to switch over here to the clip tool, put a cut there, add another cut to this side, then we can add a cut to the top and a cut to the bottom. And now if we switch back into block mode, we can get rid of that bit in the middle. And now we have a hole in our wall. The vertex tool allows you to move individual vertices of your block. Start off in the block mode and select the block you want to edit the vertices of, and then start the vertex tool. You'll see all of the vertices have these little dots to uh, indicate where they are. You can then click and drag on a vertex to move it in the XZ plane, or hold down Alt to move it in the Y axis. Uh, if you select multiple vertices by holding down Shift and clicking on them, you can then move them as a group. Now you might notice that uh, these vertices are doing something a little bit weird, like disappearing if you move them into certain positions. And that is because in Cyclops Level Builder, all of these blocks are convex objects, which means it's not possible to create an inside corner or an indentation. Uh, this is done to, um, well, partly because I was copying uh, older uh, game engine block-in tools that only use convex objects. Uh, convex objects also uh, are very fast for physics engines to deal with. Uh, I might change this in a later revision of uh, the tool, but for now just be aware that if you drag a vertex such that it is inside, it will disappear and it will be replaced with a flat plane such that this block will always be convex. Uh, if you are working on one block and you wanna to switch to working on a different block, hold the mouse over and press Alt-Q. You can see the vertices are no longer on this block and are now shown on this one. We can now start moving these vertices around. If you wanna work on two blocks at the same time, let's pop back into block mode, select both of them, go into vertex mode, and now we can adjust the vertices of both blocks.
The edge tool is a lot like the vertex tool, except instead of uh, manipulating individual vertices, you can deal with one edge at a time. Start by selecting the block you want to edit. Click on the edge tool to go into edge mode. And now you can see these lines have little dots in the center that allow you to move them. So click on an edge and click and drag to move it in the XZ plane. Hold down Alt to move it in the Y axis. You can press Alt Q to switch to a different block. And if you have two blocks selected, you can work on the edges of both of them at the same time. The face tool is also a lot like the vertex tool and it allows you to edit faces. Start by selecting the block that you want to manipulate, click on face, and now you can click anywhere on the face in order to highlight it and begin moving it around. If you press shift, you can select multiple faces and move them at the same time. Uh, if you hold down the control and shift, that will subtract it from your selection. Just the control key alone will add faces to your selection and shift alone will toggle between selected and non-selected. Uh, you can also press alt Q to switch to a different shape and start moving those faces around. And if you have two shapes selected, or if you have two or more sh shapes selected at once, you can also manipulate the faces of all your currently selected shapes. The duplicate tool allows us to create copies of geometry we've already built. Let's start off here in block mode and select the blocks that we want. And now if we click on the duplicate tool, you can see we just got a copy of all that geometry. And uh, just move the mouse around and click to drop it in place where you want it to be. Uh, you can also do this alternately by selecting your geometry and pressing Shift D, which will do the same thing. Use the delete command to delete currently selected objects. Uh, if I select several objects and then click on the delete button, you can see that they will vanish. Uh, this causes a bit of a glitch uh, where Cyclops blocks becomes deselected. That's okay. Just click on anywhere in the Cyclops blocks and uh, you will have control over it again. I'm going to press Control Z to undo that. Uh, you can also get the same effect by just selecting your blocks and pressing the X button. Uh, I tried to get the delete key to work, but that was causing some interference with the Godot editor, so uh, I switched it to the X key instead. The edit menu has a lot of options that let you manipulate the geometry. Most of these will just rotate or mirror the geometry. So for example, if you wanted to rotate 180 degrees around the X axis, that command will do that for you. Let's undo that with Control Z. Uh, you can also maybe rotate around the Z axis to get something similar. Uh, you can also mirror this. So if you want to go edit mirror in the X axis, that will just flip it left to right. And uh, the one uh, option here that is not just transforming your geometry down here is snap to grid. Uh, most of the time this won't do anything, but uh, if you have your vertices not aligned to the grid, like uh, that can happen after a clip operation or something like that. Just select that option and all your vertices of all the objects you have selected will snap to the grid so you can make sure everything is nice and neatly snapped. The material dock will allow you to add materials to the blocks that you create in Cyclops Level Builder. Uh, you can see down here on, in my file system, I have several materials that I've uh, prepared. These are just ordinary uh, Godot materials. Uh, all of these are using the standard 3D shader. And now if we want to apply these to the uh, blocks in our scene, we're just going to click and drag these over here into the material editor. And now if we click on one of our blocks and click on a brick or click on a material, it will be assigned. Okay. 
and this can be a quick way to uh, add in some materials to your scene. We can even uh, select an object and double click on different material if we want to change it to something else. The UV transform dock will allow us to more precisely position textures on our blocks. Uh, you can see here I've cut out a block for the wall here and what we're going to do is we're going to replace the brick texture that's on it right now with this falcon picture uh, so we can sort of have an inlaid sort of uh, relief carving here. Now you can see by default uh, this is tiling a little bit too much. We want the, the image to cover the entire square not to have four repeating copies of it. Well in order to do that we're going to first pop into face mode make sure this face is selected then let's come over here to UV transform and you can see this will show the effect of the UV transform on our uh, face. And if we look at the scale X here, we can click and drag on that to change how we're scaling in the X direction. Let's scale that up to 0.5 and the same for the Y direction. And uh, you can see that that is now the right size, but it's not centered. So you can fix that with the offset X. So if we click and drag there, you can shift that over and shift that up. Uh, if you want to type in your values rather than use it this click and drag, just uh, click on the option twice and then you can type in your number manually. Let's put that back to 0.5. And you also have these two options at the bottom here. You can change the rotation by moving that back and forth. And you can make things slant to the side by changing the skew. The snapping resolution dropdown will allow you to change the uh, snapping amount when you are drawing and moving blocks around. Uh, by default, this will be set to one, which means that when we draw things out, we are going to be snapping to one meter increments. Uh, if we change this to one half, we will now be snapping to every half meter. And we can even change that down to one quarter. So we're now snapping to the quarter meter mark. And of course, you can go the other way too and snap to every two meters, four meters, and so on. Uh, this will also affect the move tool. So if we select an object and move it, you can now see that we are snapping to every one meter when we move. But if we change that down to half, we are now snapping to the half meter mark. The lock UVs checkbox will keep the uh, face UVs locked relative to your block when you're moving it. Now, normally when you move a block in world space, you'll see that the block moves independent of the texture. Uh, most of the time, uh, this is what you want because this will allow textures to be in world space rather than local space. But if you have a little bit of a picture block like this, you might want to have the UVs locked to the block rather than locked to the world. So if you click on the lock UVs checkbox, now when you move it, the UVs move along with your block when you're moving it, which might be a lot closer to what you're expecting. The display mode dropdown affects how your scene is displayed in the viewport. By default, you will be in textured mode, which will show you the materials as they are. But you can also switch to wireframe mode to see a wireframe view of your model. This can be useful uh, if you are in, let's say, face mode. Let's go back to textured mode. We select face and then go to wireframe. This can be an easy way to select the far side of the model, which uh, is not something easy to do when you are in textured mode. And that's it for this early look at the Cyclops level builder. I still have a number of changes I'd like to make to it, with the biggest being letting the blocks be located anywhere in the scene rather than having to be children of the Cyclops blocks node, but I felt this was a good time to show what has been done so far. If you found this helpful, please like and subscribe. 
leave a comment below if you have any questions about how it works. And if you can afford it, you can help to support me create tools like this by subscribing to my Patreon or by donating to my Ko-fi account. Anyhow, I hope you got something out of this video, and until next time, thanks for watching.